Hi folks, I'm back with another battery test, but I want to do a uh, couple of quick updates first, <coughs> and then we'll get on to the battery test. Uh, this is the oxygen sensor that came in, and I've done some more work uh, out in the shop uh, mounting the other sensors, so uh, I'll have an update on that in the next day or so. And then the next thing is um, the, the uh, graphitized uh, carbon nitride. Uh, I made some hydrothermally about, uh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, and uh, this is the, the jar of that, and it's a rock hard in, in the bottom of that. And today I tried the uh, doing it in the uh, new microwave kiln, and that worked too. It didn't work on the, on the 30 percent power setting, though. What it worked on was the 40 percent power setting. And uh, after I did it in five minute uh, uh, five minute bursts, and uh, after the second uh, burst, uh, I opened it up and it, it, it was a ha half full with a boiling uh, yellow uh, uh, liquid in there. Um, I started with a pellet, uh, pellet, pelleticized urea, and uh, about two thirds full and uh, the 30% uh, setting wouldn't even melt it. The 40% though did melt it and it was just boiling like crazy and you can see it uh, after uh, the third uh, five minutes it would dip like this but I wasn't sure if it was done or not so I gave it another five minutes and it still looked the same you know so uh, it's like 15 minutes and uh, it's 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 done, but it's the same same thing. It's it's hard as a rock, you know, in there. So uh, the problem is, how do you get this stuff out of there? And then you have to crush it all up and uh, powder it and stuff to use it. So um, I'm thinking about uh, another way to do it. Um, I'll just uh, microwave it in the kiln, get it into a boiling liquid, and then uh, pour it into a Teflon uh, frying pan. That I've got preheated, on it, that I'll have preheated on the stove, and then just boil the uh, uh, rest of it out in the frying pan, and then it should just slide. The rock should just slide out of there uh, off the Teflon, and then so at least it'll be. Uh, you won't have to dig it out of the the pot. I'm probably ruining this little pot, and I like that thing. Seventy five cents at the thrift store. So anyway, that's the. The, uh, and I might scrape some of this off just to run a test with around the outside of that, but I'm going to try another method on that. And we don't do this because you'll have the same problem getting it out of that jar. <coughs> I'll be back. Okay, we're ready to test the first piece of carbon felt that, uh, that I made in the last video. and. Uh, uh, to review what what I did there, uh, I took uh, a mixture of uh, graphite and titanium dioxide and water and slowly added a diluted uh, uh, solution of uh, white glue and water to it until it started affecting the uh, settling rate and, um, and then uh, I uh, let that dry uh, and then I soaked uh, the pad in uh, borax after that and then let that dry and that took a long time to dry I mean it sat inside last night uh, all night long and it was still wet in the morning so I took it out and, and uh, fortunately it was a sunny uh, warm day today and so I took it out and set it in the sun and flipped it several times during the day and it finally dried but uh, it took uh, it took a long time and uh, I, that, I think that's because uh, borax is uh, sodium borate uh, dodecahydrate which means that each uh, sodium borate um, molecule is latched on to 10 water molecules so uh, uh, it, when it latches on it doesn't want to let go of those water molecules and and so it has a, a, a structure a water structure around the, the borate uh, ion and uh, that's obviously why it uh, why it's such a good linking agent is because it's linking the water together. So uh, anyway, the, the noticeable difference in it—it's it's stiffer than it was after the uh, 
after the uh, borax uh, dried in there, it, it's definitely stiffer. Uh, it's still a little a little flexible, but uh, uh, definitely much stiffer is what, is what you notice. It's still got the gray uh, color all over it from the titanium dioxide and the graphite mix. Now, the next thing we got to do is uh, try to get our um, our other active material, the carbon material, to go down in this, and that'll be the that's the what we're going to try to. Do. And it's acid, so I'm wearing a glove here, and uh, and we're going to just hope that it just absorbs right in there. I don't want to put water on it first because this is hydrophobic stuff; it's oily. And I did add uh, about five grams of uh, graphite to it and put it back on the on the mixer again to. Uh, to raise the uh, conductivity of it. Alright, let's see if it'll make a mess. Yeah, it looks like it's going in. That's good. I got the uh, the next pieces of this felt paper. I've got the second coat of uh, graphite and uh, titanium dioxide already soaked on it and it's it's drying now now this is probably going to hold quite a bit so okay I got it saturated pretty well I tried to just one drop at a time all over it and tried to saturate it evenly and as you can see now it's starting to run out the bottom and I let it sit for a few minutes too to kind of uh, try to equalize itself in there and I'm just going to set it on the pieces this is a piece of graph oil with a copper collector on the back of it which I folded this corner over just a dab there so I can try to measure it on the, on the copper but we're just going to set that on there oh shit wrong hand Alright, <coughs> and uh, this is a zinc plate, so we're going to set that on there. I'll turn it upside down. Okay. And we've got one ten climbing, one eleven still climbing, one fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. No alkaline material in the uh, with the titanium dioxide too. But, uh, in this case, it's it's climbing up. Oops, I was lost contact or something. I think I shorted it out accidentally. Uh, 120. So, because we're running out of time, let's uh, go ahead and short it out and see what kind of amps we got. Short there first. All right. You've seen it. Uh, it usually starts low and then uh, gets better every time you short it. So it's still climbing pretty good. See if it, the uh, amps go up. All right, let's do that. Uh huh. Yeah, it's going to do the same thing every time we short it. It'll it'll do better. Want to uh, 
uh, recharge faster than it. Might have moved some air into there, too. should see something around two to three milliamps, I would think, maybe even more. Uh -huh, four point something. So it's it's doing the same behavior as it did before. How long it'll do that, I don't know. Let's uh, let it self charge again. getting back up to, I mean, we haven't let it go all the way back to 120, but we've gone to 110, 111 every time, and it's still climbing, so it's going to make it. set the balance in the cell too. We're just gonna it's at one ten, let's see what kind of amps it gets. Alright. Uh, five point what, five or five point four that time? So every time it goes up, it gets better on the amps. That's uh Looks like pretty much the same results as the uh, first carbon felt test, except I, I think the uh, self-charge was definitely a lot slower. I ended up cutting a lot of uh, time out of the video to get it in, uh, and adding water at the end uh, didn't help anything on the voltage, uh, but the, the milliamps uh, kept increasing. Uh, that's the significant thing is the uh, Every time it was discharged, the, uh, it got stronger on the amps. Um, and I think that's probably because it's, uh, it takes time to structure all that uh, material in the, uh, inside the, f the carbon felt. So, uh, thanks for watching.